Hey there folks, Bob Yeager here. So I wanted to go through a quick video with you today about the Woodcraft League uh, because you all can't see inside of my head and what's going on behind the scenes. And we've been doing a lot over the past few months uh, for the initial development of the program. And I've been doing a lot of consulting with a lot of different professionals and talking to a lot of organizations and finding out what people want and figuring out how we're gonna pull it off while we're pulling it off. So. Uh, bear with me here. So if you're interested in this, uh, you want to pay attention because I want I really want to give you a clear idea of what this is all about. Um, so if you guys know the history of the Woodcraft League, after Ernest Thompson Seton left the Boy Scouts of America, he reignited one of his older programs, but he brought it out as the Woodcraft League of America. Um, my great great uncle, Ellsworth Yeager, who wrote Wildwood Wisdom, was heavily involved in that. And Sadly, when Ernest Thompson Seton died and when Ellsworth Yeager died, the program died along with them. Um, but people still talked about it for generations, for decades. And over the past few years, as I was doing programs like One Foot in the Wild or America's Woodsman, um, I realized that with my involvement with the BSA and different organizations that I really wanted something that focused on camping with skills and purpose that focused on personal growth and goal setting, that focused on bringing families and communities and organizations together um, and allowed them the ability to uh, enjoy and interact as nature, not just pre be thinking they're a visitor of nature, okay? And I realized very, very rapidly that there has to be core foundational structure of education that's available to everybody that everybody can pursue no matter what part of the world that they're in um, and no matter what kind of wilderness environment they're in you know camping is camping and we can enjoy it and we can do it safely and we can do it with skill and we can bring back that American woodcraft ideal and set of skills um, to help develop get people back into that mode of self-reliance and being able to enjoy themselves away from the computers away from the distractions and away from the noise it just so happened that right around the beginning of 2020, um, as I was kind of wrapping up my almost 30 years of marketing, consulting, and business development companies that I owned, um, the COVID thing happened. And although as terrible as it was, I used it as an opportunity to say, okay, I'm gonna fold these other consulting agencies that I have and focus 100% of my time on the Woodcraft League idea. Although at the time I didn't know that's what it was. Um, I was in talks with Dr. Julie Seaton from the Ernest Thompson Seaton Institute, helping them with some stuff on their end. And the more I was talking to them, I'm like, yeah, somebody should start a new Woodcraft League of America. And then I started thinking like one foot in the wild and the American woodsman, and I get all these things scattered out. And I'm thinking, well, what if, what if I just brought it all together into one, one program, one organization? So what is it? Well, the Woodcraft League is 100% about camping with skills and purpose, whatever your purpose is. Your purpose might be to get away from the distractions in the world, which is originally why the camping movement started. People were trying to get away from the cities and the industrial re revolution and, and the distractions and the noise and the, the crowdedness. And they wanted to go out there and just kind of at least live off the land for a couple of days and enjoy themselves in the quiet of nature and explore. Um, we have that, and it's deep within us, that explorer mentality um, to figure out what is all this stuff around us and what, what can it all do? What can we do with it? And how can we enjoy it even better and how can we protect it? And the original Woodcraft League movement was um, focused heavily on conservation. Um, now, I'm not getting into the whole global warming and all that stuff. What I'm saying is we enjoy our, our natural spaces and we just want to leave them better than what we found them. Um, but we also have this creative and this um, engineering mindset. We also have this creative and engineering mentality where we want to make stuff. We want to build stuff. We want to use tools. Uh, we don't want the noise of power tools all the time. And, you know, when we're at camp, you know, you set your fire and you, you get to cooking, you set your tent up, and then you're like, now what? And a lot of kids are that way too. 
So over the years, I had been developing programs, whoops. Over the years, I had been developing programs that would help parents and community members and different groups and organizations teach their children um, how they can enjoy the wilderness and how they can really enjoy their time and explore different goals and, and making things and making your own gear and, and really just explore problem solving and self-reliance more often. So I had to make sure that when I was developing the Woodcraft League program that it contributes something that allows everybody to want to be part of it. Um, recently, I was talking to a leader at the, uh, the main office of the uh, LDS church. I'm not Mormon, but I was just inquiring, like, you know, what route are they going with their wilderness skills program and their youth programs? And they say, well, we don't have any. We don't have anything. We don't know what to do. So I explained to them what the Woodcraft League is and what I'm developing. And they said, well, as soon as you launch it, please call us so we can figure out how we can integrate this into our youth program. Um, I called the Presidential Volunteer Service Award Office, and I asked how is it that the uh, different organizations are able to award that to young people who set goals and volunteer in their community. And they told me how, and then they asked me if I'd like to be a certifying organization and be able to do that, and I said yes. Then I called the Duke of Edinburgh's USA Branch of International Awards, and I said, well, how can I be able to award that? And they told me, and here I am. The Congressional Award Office, uh, we're in talks over the next coming weeks of me somehow partnering, the Woodcraft League somehow partnering with them. Why am I doing that? Well, it's great. It's great to learn these skills and it's great uh, to be of service and it's great to uh, work towards living within our natural environment. But it's also great when we can get our young people involved in helping their communities, setting goals for themselves, striving to make themselves better every single day and being rewarded for their efforts of accomplishing the things they set out for themselves to do and helping their community. So by talking to those programs, I'm able to launch the Woodcraft League with something that is gonna help our youth, whether it be for their college applications or their personal growth and development or just on a job resume. But at the end of the day, I know they're going to get a lot out of that. A bunch of people, plenty of people, especially friends of mine, ask, well, what's curriculum going to look like? Well, that's where the value, what value does it contribute to the members? Um, I started with talking to people like David Westcott. Um, he wrote Camping in the Old Style. If you don't have that book, go get it. At the end of that book, he has an outline that's called the Master Woodsman uh, Training. And it goes apprentice camper, journeyman camper, journeyman woodsman and master woodsman. So I, I said to David, I said, I was just talking to him today, in fact. I said, can I use that? Can I use that outline? And he's like, sure. I said, well, huh, well, well, that's a good place to start. And I said, okay. So um, I'm creating a four part training that every Woodcraft League of America member is gonna have access to full video tutorials, write-ups, um, checklists to help people grow into somebody that can achieve almost anything when they're out in nature, when they're camping. And doing it in a way where we're, every action that we do helps us create more, helps us enjoy the wilderness more, helps us do more woodcraft, but also does it in a very responsible way. So that's the beginning of the curriculum. We're gonna be doing pioneering programs. Uh, we're going to be doing health and physical fitness. We're going to be doing entrepreneurial development and personal empowerment. Um, and that comes into the chapters. Um, had quite a few people <laughs> ask me, well, I want to start my own like Woodcraft League chapters. So I come up with this idea. Jay Hercules actually came up with the thing chapters. I like that. Um, and I came up with this idea. Well, what if you know, if you have a hunting club, you can start a chapter. If you have a church, you can start a chapter. If your family wants to start a chapter, they can. If your neighborhood wants to start a chapter. Um, you have a book club and the ladies just want to get out into the wilderness once a month. You can start your own WLA chapter. And that's what it's going. they're going to be titled, WLA, WLA chapter and a number. And I'm going to teach each person who, who buys a license for a chapter to start their own LLC that's their chapter. Um, their members come through our membership system. 
every chapter will get 30% of all the members they bring into it. Plus, if they develop t-shirts and workshops and different outings and they charge for those things, they get to keep all that. So they'll pay a license fee to use our logo and our trademark and everything. Other than that, I don't want their money. And that comes down to what value can I contribute to members? Well, I'm going to kick this off. I, I'm hoping it stays this way for a very long time. It just depends on, you know, economy and everything, but it should stay this way. Um, it's going to be a hundred dollar membership lifetime for each individual member. I'm not asking for dues every year. I don't want people doing fundraising for me. Um, we're not a nonprofit, <laughs> so, uh, we're a for-profit business and that allows me to control the development of it without, um, answering to, uh, board members who want to change everything and add policies that we don't agree with. Um, and it keeps the program within reach for everybody. So you say, well, I have a family of four. Does each person sign up for a membership? Yes. And then they're a lifetime membership. They never pay again, right? We will have outside workshops and different online virtual trainings that'll cost more. Um, not more than that membership price, but additional. Uh, but that's not coming for a long ways down the road. So even the chapters, we're not starting right out the gate. We wanna get the online educational platform up and going for a couple of reasons. One, I want you to have access to it. I want you guys to get started with it. And I wanna see if people have an interest of starting their own cha chapters and becoming trained instructors and things. Uh, number two, uh, what a great way for your family and you and your children or your neighborhood or your buddies to come together and challenge one another and say, hey, uh, did you do the, uh, the apprentice camper training? Yeah, well, let's go do it. Let's, let, let's go test each other's skills, right? It's fun. Um, the entrepreneurial training is really about, I don't, I don't want chapters to be sending me money every year and stuff. I want them to grow their own business, to enjoy the outdoors and to work on volunteer work and conservation and, and getting kids and families and people into the outdoors in their own communities. And I, I want them to be rewarded for that. And if they can create a nice little company to do that, that's fantastic, right? Uh, the personal growth, it's all about goal settings. It's about challenging yourself and it's about uh, personal achievement. And it's about taking all of that and then um, contributing that to your community as well. The health and fitness part is important. Um, I've been an advocate of health and fitness ever since I was in the martial arts tournaments starting when I was like six years old. Um, I traveled around the world fighting in tournaments and training young people um, how to stay fit and how to stay healthy. Um, I've developed a program. I haven't recorded it yet. It'll be later on in the Woodcraft League down the road. Um, that's a general wilderness health, health and fitness program. It's fun. Anybody can pull it off, um, no matter where you're at with your health and fitness. And um, it lends to always having a purpose when you walk into the wilderness, right? Most importantly, the, the, how does it, the value that the Woodcraft League contributes is it brings communities, families, organizations together with this common goal of learning to engage with nature, conservation, personal growth, and having fun safely in the outdoors and being creative and exploring your ingenuity, seeing what else is possible. Where else can we go? What's down that trail? What can we build over this campfire to as, as different camp craft and cookery implements that we can make from the land or from what's around us? Um, how can we make our own, some of our own gear so we can go test it out in the field and enjoy ourselves and have a project to do with our kids? Um, also professional training. Um, there's no reason why every organization and especially in the United States that works with in the outdoors, shouldn't want to be a member of the Woodcraft League of America. No reason why. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be engaging. They'll be able to bond better with their communities and they'll have skills that used to be taught to everybody just for being a human being and now they'll get to explore those things in a fun way. Um, but also I have a, a lofty goal of enhancing public education about wilderness skills, um, bringing it to public schools, to universities, to national organizations. People, a lot of people have said to me over the past few months, over the past year, ah, yeah, you'll never get to do that. Well, I created a program years ago and it got accredited in a university in Wales. Um, I've had other programs accredited in universities in the United States. So I think I could pull it off. Um, 
I also have people say that I wouldn't be able to get those different award centers to approve me to be able to contribute those awards, Congressional Presidential Volunteer Service and Duke of Edinburgh Award, got that to happen. Um, I had people say that, well, those big organizations, they're never gonna join the Woodcraft League. I have three of them that wanna join right now, um, and they're big. This is what it's about. It's about not being concerned with people telling you that you can't and only focusing on what you'd like to accomplish. But attaching to that, and this is the only way it works, is what level of value can I create for other people and how can I continue to create more value for them? When I first started to develop the idea of the Woodcraft League of America, my first thought was, well, how could I create like a million dollars worth of value to people and make it within reach for everybody on the planet? How can I do that? How can I make that happen? How can it be even more valuable year after year? At every stage. Uh, recently, part of the development, um, although we're, I, I wanna get back to the public school and organization and university stuff. We wanna provide a vehicle to help build self-reliance wilderness skills and giving our children and community members a place where we can learn and grow together while getting outdoors more often. That's, that's the ultimate purpose, okay? So you say, well, I'm not really all into that conservation. That's okay, but because by learning these skills and going out there and doing this stuff, you'll be doing your part. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm an ultralight backpacker that does the Appalachian Trail. I'm not really a camper. That's okay. These skills will lend to that. Some people say, well, I don't want to really carry a knife or I can't carry a knife or anything. That's okay. There's ways around those things. What you have to understand is, is when I say camping with skills and purpose, it's camping with skills so you don't get hurt, so you can do it safely, so you can do it in a fun way, so you can uh, explore different things. And I got a bug on my lens. So you can explore goal setting and challenging yourself. But at the same time, it's camping with skills and purpose. The purpose is your purpose, not mine. It's yours. So somebody says, well, I want to join the Woodcraft League because I don't get together often enough with my friends. And if we can schedule this thing, then that gives us a reason. And that's your purpose. Other people say, well, I want to be better at the skills in the wilderness. And that's your purpose. Some people say, well, I just want to have something to spend more time with my kids and shut off all the technology and everything and get outdoors. Then that's your purpose. Some people might say, well, we have this group of community volunteers and we'd like to do something special with them each month. And instead of just meeting at the local church in the basement, well, then that's your purpose. Your purpose is your purpose. I, I can't define that for you. Okay. But to give you an idea, sorry, I'm so close to the camera, give you an idea of there were seven stages of development with Woodcraft League. First was gauging interest. I didn't want to create something that nobody wanted. Um, so primarily everything that I've put into the program so far that you guys haven't seen yet uh, was based upon a lot of people, large groups of people saying, we'd like to have this. And I took all those ideas and I whittled them down into starting with the base curriculum, move it into different programs that we'll release down the road. Um, and what it's going to be like and how we're going to further allow people to kind of have their own kind of sense of ownership of their different chapters and things, right? Um, second, so first was gauge interest. If people didn't want it, I wasn't going to create it and I wasn't going to just create something because I wanted to do it. Um, that's just poor business, <laughs> okay? Uh, second was form alliances. Um, with instead, uh, you know, I look at different industries that I've been in and many I've been in are very cutthroat. Uh, people are always competing with one another, um, which there's nothing wrong with healthy competition. Um, but competing with one another when it, it, there was no need to. It was better if you just worked together. Woodcraft League is just that. It's the Woodcraft League of America. It's about working together with you, with other organizations, with everybody that we possibly can that wants to contribute to society and wants to explore wilderness skills. Okay. Third was create a curriculum, and with the advice of different leaders, and especially with David Westcott, he's just been a phenomenal uh, person to be able to just sit down and talk to. I'm really trying to get him <laughs> more involved. Um, it, it, it just flowed. The curriculum flowed. So starting this week up until the end of August, all I'm doing is recording videos for the curriculum. 
and doing write-ups for the curriculum. And through this, I'm training my, my daughter who's very good with journalistic skills and um, web development and different things. Um, I'm tasking her to transcribe a bunch of things and edit them into handbooks and create something that you guys are gonna be amazed by. You're gonna enjoy it. Um, next was developing the online learning platform. I used to develop my own websites and things, and I tell you honestly, you don't want what I can create. <laughs> Uh, because I'm a throw it up there and make sure it works and get done with it. I wanted this to be great. I, I just want it to pop. I want it to be fantastic for anybody that's using the, the online learning center. Um, I want it to be something that's seamless, that's enjoyable to use, um, and that is flawless in its execution. So there's the front end side of it, which is like the where you sign up and things like that. And then there's the back end side, the part that people don't realize is a separate entity altogether and that's the membership system and everything i wanted those two to come together nicely and flow together and look very good and be user friendly and so i recruited alan gregory who i've worked on with other projects um to help well to develop that thing and that's what he's been working on for the past couple of days is getting that done so that was a big um that's a big hurdle you know i'm bootstrapping the the development of this in the beginning um, to show people you can create something from nothing. You can create a, a, an impact on the world, not just your country, not just your local community, but the world. If you really just sit down and knuckle down and get to it. Um, resources are not the issue. And that's something you'll learn in the Woodcraft League. Um, the lack of resources is rarely ever the thing that keeps people from doing things. It's the lack of resourcefulness that keeps them from doing things. Uh, there's a way and you know I got Alan involved and he's working and getting it all set up and together we're creating a, a phenomenal experience for you guys um, volunteer and community service projects that was the the fifth part not everybody has to do that but I'm big in volunteer and community service I, I, every week I'm doing something and um, so like I'm starting a pilot program here locally with the Woodcraft League um, where we're doing a give a pole, take a pole um, fishing challenge. So a lot of the older folks in the community, uh, avid fishermen have like 40, 50 poles in their garages and stuff. And my son's going around collecting them and cleaning them up and together with um, a local fisherman, re relining the whole, the poles and everything and giving them out to kids that have never had the opportunity to fish or can't afford the, the equipment. And so w from that came the idea of contact other local fishermen that are having the same issue where their basement or garage is filled with stuff because people buy fishermen fishing poles all the time and they have a bunch of them and uh, get them out there and get them in use get people using them and a lot of people don't realize that that also lends to conservation as well so being able to create that program and then take those kids out and teach them how to properly fish um, and not leave a mess and you know recovering their their lines and things like that and getting them out there for the first time with their families um that's that's a great pro project to start but the one of the main reasons i was doing it except for the fact that it's a really good thing to do for people is i thought to myself well if people create woodcraft league chapters and i say to them you should start some sort of volunteer project in your community and they say well give me an example and i tell them the next question they're going to ask is well did you do it I want to lead by example and I'm teaching my son and my daughter to do the same thing. Um, I can't expect to ask other people to go do something if I'm not willing to do it myself and showing that it can be done. Uh, it came, it was an idea as we were sitting around the pool one day um, at my wife's grandmother's birthday. And then the very next day we got started because it, it didn't take anything but effort, right? The sixth thing is um, help others create their own WLA chapters. Um, that's critical. I want people to feel this sense of ownership. I want them to feel that their journey with the Woodcraft League is for their group's purpose. Their, their group has this, this idea of why they wanna do this stuff. I'm just requiring everybody to go through the Woodcraft League training, of course. That has to be part of the chapters um, because then it's not a Woodcraft League chapter if you don't, right? So, um, but you can add your own Bible study to it. Uh, your own, like I said, book club, hunting club, whatever part, uh, act, activists, 
uh, centers ideas to it. You can use your chapter as a way to team build and bond and learn new skills and engage with nature and have fun with your friends and colleagues. But at the same time, use those opportunities to sit down without distraction to talk about your purpose as well. And I think it's just a phenomenal way to, for people to come together and work together. Um, and seventh is launch the program. So I have most of those things, except for the chapter part, that'll be released after we launch the program. That'll be down the road a little bit more. Not very long down the road, but down the road a little bit more. Um, I'm thinking by the end of August, beginning of September, people will be able to become lifetime members of the Woodcraft League. When I say lifetime members, folks, I'm not charging you monthly. I'm not charging you yearly. You pay one time, and you're a lifetime member of the Woodcraft League of America. Uh, there will be availability to buy different things. If you see, I got, I, got, I guess you can see that. My Woodcraft League patches, buttons. Uh, we're not making uniforms. Uh, you can make your own T-shirts and stuff. We might sell some T-shirts, but um, we're going to let the chapters and members decide how they want to go about um, getting T-shirts. For members, you'll be able to buy T-shirts. For chapters, you'll have the ability to make your own T-shirts and distribute them to your people, like sell them to your people or whatever. Okay? So in these beginning stages, one of the most difficult things is the overwhelming litany of great ideas that come your way and that people recommend to you and having the fortitude to say no not yet <laughs> you got to do one simple step at the time at a time so our primary first steps are get the online learning center up and going and have the master woodsman's training in place um, so people can start enjoying being a member of the woodcraft league from there, it's we have a few other trainings we're going to be putting in there, and we're going to have some pretty helpful resources that we're adding to that. And then it's branching out from there, the development of the awards programs. And then from there, it's launching the chapters. Okay, I'm holding my phone really weird and it's uncomfortable. Uh, then it's launching the chapters. So we're not, we're not pummeling people with a bunch of stuff. We're not just putting a bunch of crap in there just to fill something up. Uh, we're creating something with a purpose. We want it to be clean, we want it to be fun, we want it to be easy to use and easy to navigate through. And we want community leaders, parents, friends to come together, teach young people, teach one another, and grow together. And uh, what an awesome way to do it, huh? Now guys, I've spent my life in the outdoors. I was raised in this kind of environment. Um, Woodcraft, American woodcraft, in the wilderness sense, for us was, it wasn't something that we, we learned secondarily. It was something our parents and our grandparents taught us all the time. It was the way we lived. And I don't, I don't need people to go out and buy a chunk of land and, you know, live off the land and all this stuff all the time. It's, it's about realizing that you're not a visitor of nature. You're a part of it. You get to engage with it. You get to interact with it. And there's a right and a bunch of wrong ways to do that. Um, but there's also a lot of fun ways to do that. And we want to explore that together. And I know that um, it seems like, I don't know about you, but it seems like to me out there, a large part of society is losing their way. Um, they're getting caught up in the wrong things, the wrong ideas, the, the wrong goals. Well, let's go back to basics. Let's go back to where we came from and let's learn together and grow together. And I'm, I'm really hoping that you enjoy when we launch this program. I just wanted to give you kind of like an insight into my head of what this is going to look like and why I'm creating it. And I can only dream that it'll live beyond me. All right, take care.